So the things we are going to do now is to prove this to you. Delta G naught is equal to negative RT natural log KEQ. So make sure that you know it's delta G naught, not delta G. Delta G naught is actually the Gibbs free energies at standard condition. Where your KEQ is actually your equilibrium constant. Okay, so how do we actually prove this? So let's start from the very simple equation. A, A in the gas bone plus B, B in the gas bone. That's going to eventually produce C, C in the gas bone. So assuming we start from a standard condition, we know the pressure of your A at standard condition, which is equals to one bar. Standard condition, pressure of your B also equals to one bar. And then the same thing for your C. Assuming that's where we're going to start our reactions. From here, we can write out delta G naught for these specific conditions, right? Where the delta G naught can be calculated from your delta G naught formation of your product minus delta G naught formation of reactant. This is going to make the equation number one. As soon as we start from here, eventually it's going to reach equilibrium. Something's going to happen along the way, but eventually your PA is going to reach equilibrium. Your PB is going to reach equilibrium, and then your PC is going to reach equilibrium. So let's say this is actually equation number five. So we want to do something in between, so we can go from here all the way to here. So this is actually initial, and then to the final state. If you want to reach equilibrium, you want to have the thing start with AA in the gas phase, PA not. And eventually you want to reach AAG, PA equilibrium. But because in the end, you want to have the A at equilibrium on the reactant side, I can just swap and just write this as PA equilibrium, PA at the standard condition. Let's say this is my equation number two. Then you can do the same thing, right? So you want to have your PB reach equilibrium on the reactant side. So it's going to equilibrate with PB gas form, PB not. And for your C, you want to have your C equilibrium on the product side. So for your right, it's actually C, C in the gas form. You want to start from the standard state and eventually you come to equilibrium. So the next thing we want to write out is that the chemical potential of the three equations. We can actually write out the chemical potential of a gas. Mu is equal to mu star plus RT natural log P over P naught. Here because you're actually doing this product minus your reactant. The product side will be mu star plus RT natural log. PA naught over P naught minus the chemical potential of your reactant will be the mu star plus RT natural log PA equilibrium over P naught. Mu star, mu star cancel out with each other, right? So remaining one is actually RT natural log PA naught over P naught minus RT natural log PA equilibrium over P naught. So once you do this minus, it will become PA naught over P naught divided by your PA equilibrium divided by P naught. So your P naught, P naught cancels out. So in the end you have is actually RT natural log PA naught over PA equilibrium. So let's actually the final answer you're going to have to calculate your delta mu A. With these things in mind, then you should be able to actually write out your delta mu B and delta mu C. Your delta mu B is going to equal to RT natural log PB naught over PB equilibrium. And then you can write out your delta mu C equals to RT 
natural log PC equilibrium over PC naught. To get to your final state, you just add up this one, two, four. Then you will reach PA equilibrium plus PB equilibrium equals PC equilibrium. Your five is simply equal to sum of one, two, three, and four. So in one, we know what you have is actually your delta G naught. And two, three, four, what you have is delta mu A, delta mu B, delta mu C, right? So you're going to have plus RT natural log PA naught over PA equilibrium plus RT natural log PB naught over PB equilibrium plus RT natural log PC equilibrium over PC naught. There's actually one more thing we want to be careful here. For the ABC, we actually assign different st uh, stoichiometry coefficients, and those things will actually got reflected in your mu A, mu B, and mu C. You need to actually put those things back here because if you have A moles of that, then your mu A need to actually multiply A moles, right? The same thing happened to the B, and the same thing happened to your C. If we have those things corrected here, then this one should be delta G naught plus A times RT times natural log of these things plus B times C. Okay, so that's actually the complete equation, right? So we know the final delta G is going to equal to the sum of all these terms together. Another thing we want to do is to put the A, B, and C into your natural log part. So I can write this as delta G naught plus RT natural log PA naught over PAE to the eighth power plus RT natural log PB naught over PBE to the base power plus RT natural log PCE over PC naught to the C's power. Okay. So the things I want to do further is actually I want to flip this too. Okay, so that it will become delta G naught plus RT natural log. 1 over PAE over P8 naught to the eighth power plus RT natural log 1 over PBE over PB naught to the base power. Okay, I can just put these things inside so it's easier. Okay plus RT natural log PCE over PC naught to the C's power. Okay. The next thing I want to do is actually I want to combine the these three terms all together. Okay, so that I'm going to have delta G naught plus RT natural log on the top, you're going to have PCE over PC naught to the C's power. Bottom will be the PAE over PA naught to the A's power times PBE over PB naught to the B's power. So C here is actually your PC equilibrium over PC naught, right? So P real over P reference state is actually your activity. So this one can be written as delta G naught plus RT natural log activity of your component C to the C's power. The same concept can be applied to the button two. So you know you're going to have A a to the eighth power, A, B to 
to the fifth power. And then eventually this term is actually the definition of your equilibrium constant. If you look back question we talk about is A, A plus B, B becoming C, C, right? We know the KEQ is going to equals to the activity of your product raised to the C's power divided by the activity of your reaction raised to the corresponding power. So in other words, using this example, we can actually derive that the delta G is going to equal to delta G naught plus RT natural log K. So this is actually equals to delta G naught plus RT natural log KEQ. So now we need to apply some simple concept that you should already know. So at equilibrium, we know delta G is going to equal to zero, right? Therefore, you know zero is going to equal to delta G naught plus RT natural log KEQ. Therefore, delta G naught is going to equal to negative RT natural log KEQ. So when I was young, I was curious why the equilibrium constant is actually related to delta G naught, but not delta G. Because I thought, isn't delta G the ultimate indication that your system reached equilibrium, right? So the answer is actually yes, that's right. Delta G is eventually dictates the status of your system. And then when the delta G equals to zero, then you know you reach equilibrium. But in here, you can see the equilibrium constant is actually related to your delta G naught. Okay, and the main reason for that is because if you want to see a things reach equilibrium, you must start from somewhere. Conventionally, we assume all our experiments start from standard state, which at standard state, the delta G you have for your system is actually delta G naught. What this equation tells you is if I start from my standard state, I'm actually away from my equilibrium. The degree of deviation from equilibrium is going to eventually connect to my delta G naught. And we use the difference between the standard state and the equilibrium state to represent how far away you are deviates from the equilibrium. So the amount is ultimately going to determine the equilibrium constant. Okay, so this is why in the end, the KEQ is actually related to your delta G naught, not delta G, because at the equilibrium, all your delta G is simply equals to zero.